Hello everyone, this is Sage and welcome to the Executive Corner Expert Talks by Kalkine TV. Today's guest is Mr. Jeremy Meltzer, the founder and CEO of I Equals Change. And in today's show, we're going to learn more about how digitization is helping raise funds for charitable organizations through retailers at the point of sale. Extreme poverty in the world is estimated to increase at staggering rates after the recent economic downturn. And in today's show we're lucky to have with us someone who dedicates his time to engineering solutions to help fight this. So in today's show we have Mr Jeremy Meltzer, founder and CEO of I Equals Change. Welcome Jeremy. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. No problem. My name's Sage and I'll be the moderator for today's discussion. And for the viewers, Jeremy Meltzer is a social entrepreneur with an inspiring voice for women's rights globally. Let's begin, Jeremy. I can't wait to share your insights on the show. How does I Equal Change work for retailers and customers, please? We've reimagined a very simple solution for retailers to give back. Uh, by simply creating a platform that appears post-purchase where we flip the model so the brand gives back from every sale and after checking out the customer simply gets to choose where it goes. So I wanted to create a new and sustainable funding stream for extraordinary development projects working in Australia and around the world and I thought what if we could flip the model where the brand gives back, the customer chooses we can provide the brand with effectively the benefits of building that message into the customer journey uh, and therefore uh, become a business for purpose at the same time. What a great way to make use of consumers' impulse shopping. Because <laughs> I know at the counter when you get there yes. and there's all these little knickknacks around, you just want to pick one up and spend one or two dollars on it. So why not give that one or two dollars to a charitable organisation where you can make a difference? Sounds like a fantastic innovation, Jeremy. Jeremy, Jeremy, big, my, big your pardon. How does a charity receive its donations from retailers? You mentioned it's post-sale. Could you explain that a little better? So we manage the whole process for the retailers. Uh, I mean, customers are wanting to shop brands of purpose today more than ever before. I mean, COVID has accelerated this movement. There's definitely an understanding that we are entering urgent times uh, as a community globally. And uh, so we manage all the admin, we gather the donations, we pay out 100% of those funds to the NGOs based on their customers' NGO project choices to effectively make it simple to give back. I mean, brands have been exploring this space for a long time. Uh, most brands still do nothing, though, uh, effectively focusing on product, which is totally understandable given that that's what their business exists uh, for, to uh, sell great products. But it's just not enough anymore. Uh, consumers are expecting more. They are wanting to know that their purchase will do good in the world, will create change and are uh, shopping for change. And uh, retailers are realising they must be able to engage their consumers, their customers in a broader conversation beyond product. So effectively, we exist to make that simple and to ensure that we fund best practice development projects with a focus on women and girls empowerment, which is our DNA. Uh, and we're very proud to have raised uh, well, as of this morning, over $3.6 million, $1 at a time, which is uh, changing lives in Australia and 13 other countries where our impact partners work. Congratulations on that significant amount ranged. That is really commendable. Well done. And brand image has become so much more of a significance as well in the last 10 to 20 years in regards to who the retailers are supporting and what they're doing with their extra funds wherever possible. The United Nations as well, Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency is working to provide dignity kits to those living in extreme poverty, going through things like childbirth. Why does your platform focus on women and girls? One of the greatest drivers of economic growth is uh, to, put, to empower women is fundamental to lifting communities out of poverty. 
So we have had those statistics from the development sector for many years now and understand that it is essential that girls get access to education, that girls are enabled both culturally and socially and economically to wait as long as possible to make their own choices around their reproductive health, uh, the size of their families, the age in which they are uh, enabled and supported to get married or indeed wait until uh, later on in their life when they get married. And so we know, for example, if you invest in a woman, she will spend up to 90% of the funds that she raises uh, or she makes through her business into her family, uh, which in the developing world, apparently, men, we tend to spend about 50% on ourselves and the rest on our families. Women spend up to 90%. And this has an enormous impact on the health of their children, uh, education outcomes for their children, health outcomes, and indeed lifts the whole uh, community for um, where, where she lives. And so uh, we know the focus now must be uh, women and girls if we are to challenge and impact some of the greatest uh, issues of our time we must focus on the empowerment of women and girls. And of course, uh, economic empowerment is the foundation to that, starting with education, maternal health outcomes, and, and the litany of issues that are still impacting and holding women and girls back from realizing their potential around the world. Uh, there's a very interesting link to climate change as well, and making sure that girls are educated and enabled to stay in school as long as possible, and therefore they have smaller families. And so there's no silver bullet to any of these issues, but uh, given how long women and girls have held, been held back, uh, this is uh, our focus and will remain our focus, even though we do partner with other projects and there's now environmental projects which retailers can support, our focus is uh, women and girls empowerment. Fantastic. Thank you, Jeremy. It's so important to have a dialogue about this subject, which can so easily be just sort of pushed into the wayside. Um, and it's great to see the federal budget also empowering women and having a focus strongly on women's superannuation, women's mental health and childbearing costs. In your opinion, why should businesses use I equals change, please? Well, we've proven really interestingly that when brands give back from every sale it also drives growth for them so there is a, a growth argument there is a marketing opportunity uh, we've been very pragmatic in terms of speaking the language of business and wanting to prove that this is not effectively a cost uh, as a donation has been seen but this is one of the most powerful ways that you can communicate your brand and talk about your products and build purpose into the organization and of course we're learning that most retailers want to go on this journey and want to communicate uh, around the good that they're doing uh, and so effectively we make this simple and I think it's about driving brand relevance as well you know uh, consumers are sh looking for brands they're wanting to shop from brands that uh, reflect their values and we make that simple, make it powerful. Um, Jeremy, you were bringing up some very interesting points there about making it a customer experience where the consumers can feel like they've played a part in helping change the lives of the people being benefited by the charitable organisations. Um, we do have to start winding up there. It is so important to keep this discussion open. I think one of the biggest changes in the economy was women joining the workforce and we need to keep educating women and finding people in poverty the chance to still grow and develop and hopefully find their paths and lives. Could you please throw some light on a few charitable projects that you support? We support both large and small, from uh, UN Women to Save the Children to Plan Australia. Uh, I also am passionate about the small projects. There is an Australian doctor called Dr Barry who lives up in PNG. And he was a carpenter and he retrained as an obstetrician over 20 years ago when he saw so many women dying of childbirth in remote islands in PNG. And he lives up there and he flies around in his little seaplane making sure that women don't die when they give uh, birth from some very simple um, interventions which can ensure that, uh, that women survive 
uh, childbirth. And so, you know, we're passionate about supporting projects that are small like that, where the money goes a long way to larger organizations that have the resources and funds and expertise to uh, to stabilize communities during humanitarian crises. We were and continue to support uh, communities and girls' education up in the Rohingya refugee camp. Uh, and so we really want to help unlock uh, the development capabilities within these organizations uh, by bridging worlds between the retail sector and the not-for-profit sector, delivering that new and sustainable funding stream whilst creating a new normal of product and purpose in the retail sector, which consumers are driving very excitingly. They're wanting to shop those brands. And so we see this as an essential evolution in retail, retail 2.0, must combine both product and purpose, and we're very proud to be playing our part in moving the needle forward. Exactly. Why not help retailers and consumers find the soul in their success? And Jeremy, we're going to close the discussion there. Was there any passing or closing comments you'd like to share with our viewers before we wind up? Well, business has been uh, one of the greatest drivers of economic growth globally. Indeed, capitalism, for all its flaws, is the best, uh, the best system we have at the moment. And uh, the more we all seek to support those brands uh, in all sectors, from services and products that are reflecting the world that we wish to see, the more we can start to uh, really create change during this ultimately fragile and urgent time uh, for for the human species. I mean, it's not rhetoric to, to say that anymore. I mean, development experts and people in this space understand we really have 10 years to right the ship in terms of many of the great challenges that are facing us. And so, you know, this is not just about our grandkids uh, and looking forward to ensure that we have a, 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 a livable planet, but this is really in our lifetime. And so every choice we make as consumers can create change. And the more we make those responsible choices, the more businesses are going to indeed be required to meet that demand. And uh, I think working together and realizing that every choice we make is, is, is important and the more responsible we can be, uh, the more we, uh, we accelerate this movement. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing your insights on the show today and making time for us, Jeremy. Those words are totally resonating with me. I completely agree with you. The change starts with ourselves and the collective effort makes a commendable difference. And viewers, if you've just joined us, we just had a very inspiring conversation with Mr. Jeremy Meltzer, who is the founder and CEO of I Equals Change. You can watch the full discussion at our YouTube channel, Calkine Media. And please stay watching. We have further expert talk coming up as well as live market updates and as we say stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine.